Welcome back to the Neurosymbolic Channel. Today we have some exciting research to talk to you about. And it deals with using what we call a semantic proxy to replace the simulator in a reinforcement learning framework. And the idea is that if you can replace a simulator with a, a logic-based uh, proxy, you could get improved performance, you can get explainability, and you can leverage some really nice characteristics such as the ability to model non-Markovian relationships, uh, instantaneous actions, and also do some interesting stuff with modularity and get an explainable result. So we do this using our uh, open world temporal logic framework we call PyReason that is based on an idea from the 90s uh, from Kiefer and Supermanian called annotated logic. And so I'll just go ahead and share some slides. Okay, so first let's talk a bit about pi reason. So one way to think of pi reason is you have a multi-labeled graph where the nodes and edges uh, can all have some different meanings. And that graph evolves over time. So you have this initial state of the graph. And you don't just have to have the initial state of the graph at the first time period. You can have, you know, the initial state of the graph at any time period. And the good news is, since it's open world, uh, if something is not known, it's not treated as false. It's actually treated as unknown. And things can either become uh, true or false as the inference process proceeds. Likewise, we have some rules, and this dictates how the graph changes over time. And so this is a, a neurosymbolic framework, you know, based, you know, supports a first order logic. Uh, we've got some low level uh, machine kind of uh, implementations that make this go very fast. In the result of taking in the rules and the graph, you get a snapshot of how the graph evolves over time. And this is like a simple uh, supply chain kind of example where you see it's failure spreading throughout a supply network and the red nodes are failures. As time goes on, more and more nodes fail. It's just very simple. You can also take aggregates over the logical elements. And that's really handy in doing something like computing reward, which we'll see why that's important in a moment. So here's your traditional way of doing uh, deep reinforcement learning. You have uh, your training algorithm. Uh, you, it's uh, taking a policy and running it through the simulator and comparing how that policy does uh, by virtue of a reward function and then iteratively uh, changing that policy. The simulation is where a lot of the expense comes into play here. And so, you know, so we have all these shortcomings. So with using Pi Reason, we overcome some of these issues. So first, it's highly performant. Um, it gives you an explanation as to how the environment evolves. So you get an element of explainability, even if you're using deep RL for your reinforcement learning uh, training. Uh, it's got this nice characteristic of being modular. So if you train one agent, you could take that agent policy and you could throw it back into the logic program used by PyReason and have that uh, be used as maybe an opponent in another uh, scenario. And we have some nice uh, things with extensibility as well. So first thing you need is a logic program representation of game. And here we have some examples from the paper showing that if an agent uh, at location X chooses to move in a direction that's not blocked, then the move down atom is then updated to be true. And so we have a whole bunch of rules like this that can be used to represent the game. Uh, in the paper, we created the rules ourselves, but uh, these rules can be learned from data uh, and we even have some ideas about how you can use large language models to actually learn such rules. And indeed, there's a lot of work out there, especially in temporal logic, on learning logical statements using a large language model. 
But what's really interesting about this is because we're using logic to represent the game, we can add constraints in the agent behavior in that logic program. So we can constrain what the agent can do without having to do anything to the reward function or do anything to the reinforcement uh, policy learning algorithm at all, because it's in the game. It's the agent is prevented from doing certain things. And you see an example in that rule or say, where the agent is not blocked. So that's, that's a constraint. And you can have the constraints for anything. So how does this do in runtime? Well, we compared it to two simulation environments, uh, StarCraft and AFSIM, which is a military simulation environment. And basically we got uh, two to three orders of magnitude improvement for both runtime and uh, uh, for runtime across all environments. And we got uh, some comparable uh, improvements for memory usage as well, up to you know, one to two orders of magnitude. So, you know, this is really good news. We're, we can go a lot faster using a semantic proxy, but then the question becomes, well, what kind of results do you get? So we took an agent trained in PyReason, and after every few uh, epochs of training, we threw that agent into StarCraft and AFSIM and looked at what the reward would be and compared that to uh, PyReason. We also looked at the win rate as well. And overall, uh, these results are very close, particularly on win rate. Uh, reward is, a, in, keep in mind, oftentimes reward is just used as a proxy for win rate because it is something that um, is, is a bit more continuous and how it changes over the course of the training. So in terms of win rate, you know, we're, we're like within 2% in general. Um, you know, something comparable with uh, the reward. And so this is some nice evidence that we're getting uh, very similar performance by training with PyReason, even though it's a, a lot, lot faster. So then going beyond the comparison with the baselines, uh, PyReason, since it's rule-based and those rules have a time lag, there's nothing in there that says the time lag has to be the same. So this is really great in being able to directly model non-Markovian relationships in the environment. And we can actually leverage this in our policy training to produce a better agent. So here we compare uh, policy training for an agent that considers uh, non-Markovian versus one that doesn't. And the one that considers non-Markovian uh, ends up doing quite better in terms of win percentage. And as I mentioned earlier, PyReason provides a explainable trace for all runs in the environment, and you get stuff that looks like this. Um, and it tells you at every time step uh, a, a precise description of the state, uh, as well as you know what rule fired that led something to change. So you know exactly how things evolved. This, I think, is going to be really useful for things like sim to sim or sim to real transfer, where you may want to compare between two different environments you and just to make sure that uh, or to understand what that gap between the two environments is. And here you can kind of look at that directly and do some direct manipulation since it's not just explainable, but it's actually symbolic. So it's amenable to further processing. So anyway, this was our quick intro on this work. Uh, we have code available. Um, we'll have a, a preprint linked in the description. So please check it out, um, and you know, and you know, maybe uh, uh, try our implementation and, and see how it can work for you and your reinforcement learning problem. Thanks again for tuning in.